Absolutely. Because if you think about it, everybody trains for the swim, the bike, and the run, because that's really what triathlon is. But they're held together by the glue of transition. I was out there thinking on my ride, because I, I do a lot of these solo rides, so it gives me a lot of time to think. And, you know, on these rides, you think of anything. I mean, not even necessarily to do with winning Kona, which happens all the time to me when I'm riding out there solo. It's, it's amazing. Someday, someday it might happen. Um, what I was thinking about today, the thought that would never leave, is about uh, transition. And the question is, what is the value of a good transition. Okay, let me change into some more appropriate clothing, um, something a little more comfortable, a little drier, and um, this is kind of the end of my neighborhood here and there's not much around. I'm going to change behind that tree over there. So, like I was saying, I was thinking about what is the value of a good transition time, really. Because if you think about it, everybody trains for the swim, the bike, and the run, because that's really what triathlon is. But they're held together by the glue of transition. And so my question was, can a good transition really make or break your race? So, to answer that question, I think I have a way to put a number to it. Let's go back to the Tri-Riot FEMA trailer and take a look at a spreadsheet that I put together and some graphs, a little bit of numbers, but there are some pictures, so I think you'll enjoy it. And then we'll come back out here and I'll talk about the basics of a good transition. All right, All right everybody, welcome to the Tri-Riot FEMA trailer. Hey, all right. Let's, uh, let's get started with this. I need my glasses because um, when it comes to computer work, I'm pretty well blind without them. First thing you need to do to answer the question, what is the value of a good transition? Or alternatively, does a positive transition have a positive effect on my ranking overall? Fair enough. Everybody's familiar with spreadsheets, a tabular form of data. You got uh, columns across the top, you got rows down the side, or column, col column, and row. Two-dimensional table. Here we go. Opening it, opening it up. Do, 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 do. There we go. So now, first thing you have to do, get your data, put it in a spreadsheet, right? Just like this. You can copy the data from event websites. Uh, you got to be careful about names, however. Uh, you don't want to uh, notice I'm not publishing or showing any names here. There's no names. So anyway, got all the data, get your age group data, separate it out and put it into its own sheet. What I want to do is I want to calculate, we have overall time, right? I want to calculate the SBR time, swim, bike, run time. I'm calling it the SBR time. And that's of course just the sum of swim, bike and run. I want to calculate the SBR rank and Excel has a nice little formula for that. Get that do, 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 in there. There we go. Now, the next thing we have to calculate is delta R. Delta is the mathematical formula for change, or I should say the mathematical symbol for change, not formula. And R stands for rank. So what's our change in rank? What's our delta R? Right? That's easy enough to calculate. Just take the SBR rank minus the overall rank and we should, whoops, what am I doing? We should get, there we go, our change in rank. And you can see some of these had no change. This one went up three places. So I'm just really interested in one person. That would be me, my record. And let's look at that. Numbers are good and, and all that, but it's hard to digest all those numbers and make sense of them just by looking at them. So let's look at something more graphical, something a little easier to digest, right? Let's go to um, a plot. 
Here's just a basic grid. Along the x-axis will be the event. Along the y-axis will be the rank. And well, I'm going to mark out the, the podium places, the first, second, and third place. You can see the ranks one, two, three along the y-axis there. Now I'm going to add uh, a data point for my SBR rank. And that's this data point right up here. That's my rank, sixth place. And we already said my, my finishing rank was third place, so we'll put that in. And then we'll connect the two together with a, uh, a green, green line with a, and a down arrow. So that down arrow means I actually increased in rank and went from sixth place to third place. And this is all good and well for one. That's kind of interesting. But let's look at everything I've done in the last 10 years. All the down arrows indicate a, a, a positive direction that I'm increasing in rank, getting closer to the podium. The red arrows here, these two, are indicating that I'm getting farther away from the podium or farther away from that first place ranking. These dots that have no arrows from them means there was no change at all. So what's the summary of this? How do we summarize this into a nice, neat little concise table? In two cases, over the last 10 years, my rankings got worse due to transition. In nine cases, there was no change. And in 21 cases, transition made my ranking better. So my conclusion from all this is obviously... Let's go back out to uh, the transition thing that I had set up and we'll talk about some key elements uh, for a basically good transition. All right, here we go. That was pretty cool, huh? You can actually have a better race by having a better transition. I mean, nobody ever really thinks of that, but I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and there we have some numbers to show that it can happen. It may not happen in every case. And remember this, for every time somebody increases their ranking uh, due to transition, someone, else, someone else's ranking is decreasing. So if everybody practices their transitions, then it won't make a hill of beans difference. So why am I telling you this? This should be my little secret. Oh well. I hope it helps you. Um, here's some of the keys uh, to a good transition that, that I've found that helped me. I've posted some videos called Speed Tips that show in more detail some of the things. But the key is, the bottom line is keep moving. Don't stop. Do not sit down. Do not drink water. There's water on the run course. You should have water on your bike. Do not stop to chat. Do not stop to put on extra clothes that you don't need. Keep moving. When you come in from the swim, you're going to have your cap and goggles in your hand. Now this is assuming no wetsuit. If a wetsuit makes things a little more complicated, you can watch my speed tip videos uh, to, to show what I do for that. But no wetsuit, you got your cap and goggles in your hand, you get to the, your transition area, put them down, put the cap and goggles down, grab your helmet, get it on, grab the bike, and go. And when you cross that mount line, then mount immediately without stopping. You can do a flying mount where you, you, your leg goes over the back of the saddle, or you can do a mount like I do where your leg goes over the top two. Coming in from the bike, it's somewhat the opposite. You just dismount the same way you mounted. If you mount on the left side, your right leg needs to be in front of your left because that way, when you step off the bike, there's no stopping. It's just a smooth transition from biking to running. You rack your bike, get rid of your helmet, put on the shoes, grab your number belt, and go. And that's all there is to it. It's really quite a simple concept. Just keep moving. All right, well, I hope that helps. I hope it helps you have a better race and I hope I see you at a race. If you see me, come by, say hello. Um, until then, I'm LG for Tri-Rite. Bye.